Hello. So today I'm going to be talking about Time Shelter by Bulgarian author Georgi Gospodinov. This book has recently been shortlisted for the International Booker Prize, covering themes of time, memory, death, morality, and most importantly, nostalgia. This novel is a meditation on time and memory. Gospodinov explores what it's like to remember our pasts, perceive our presents, and imagine our futures. The premise is thus. Our nameless narrator and his mysterious colleague Gostine have created these rooms to help Alzheimer's patients. I'm actually skipping over a lot of things by starting there, but I feel like I'll be ruining some of the more puzzling and philosophical aspect of the nameless narrator and the mysterious Gostine's relationship if I dug any deeper. So they've built these rooms to help Alzheimer's patients, rooms of nostalgia. By replicating a room that looks and feels identical to a patient's past, they can almost wake something up in their patients. The results are so overwhelmingly successful that they start to build more rooms exploring different decades. The narrator's knowledge of history and the fact that he's a writer allows him to explore the past in a way that digs deeper than just the aesthetics. He's able to start exploring the feeling and the psychological aspects of a certain year or decade and why it might have felt the way it did. In the world of this novel, the Alzheimer's disease appears to be spreading across Europe. And the need for these rooms of nostalgia gets greater and greater and greater. They expand their operation across Europe, opening up more buildings, more rooms, and soon people who don't even suffer with Alzheimer's find themselves wanting to escape into the past. And then everything starts to snowball. The idea of reverting back to one's past, a happier time, starts spreading across Europe. People start exploring old music and technology. Even things as small as sayings start to seep themselves back into the consciousness of societies. Historical recreations become the new big thing as this swell of nostalgia is just taking over. It builds and builds and builds to the point in which entire nations decide to hold referendums in order to decide what decade they should revert back to as a nation. The happy times is what they call them. And finally, we explore what it's like to live in the reality of one's own past. And I'm going to leave that there as far as what happens in this book or what this book is about. I think that gives you a good enough idea of what this book is exploring. But ultimately, this is a book of ideas with minimal character or plot development. This book is just an exploration of nostalgia and European history through this absurdist lens of what if this happened. And I absolutely loved it. Side note, I think this book works better if you read it slowly. Each section or chapter of this book covers a new aspect or idea of this bulging nostalgia disease and it leaves no stone unturned. But it's the matter of fact and very blunt writing style, which I loved, that doesn't really lend itself to binge reading. I think if you picked this book up each morning and just read a chapter or two and allowed the rest of the day for you to just ruminate on the sheer and vast amount of ideas a single chapter holds within it, the better this book will work. There's something in the writing style and the vast amount of information that's being thrown at you that can start to bog you down as a reader. Or at least that's what I found happening to me. So I decided to step back a bit from this book and slow things down. Give myself time to really think and question everything it was throwing at me. So what did I like and what didn't I like? What I liked. So I've already mentioned it, but the writing style is just great. It is so blunt to the point and completely stripped of all fat, yet there is such poetry in its simplicity. It is just amazing how Gospodinov is able to bring decades to life in such a vivid and sensory way. What I also really liked is that this book is very, very funny. I mean, it is really, really, really funny. I was laughing out loud constantly. Now obviously humour is very subjective and I imagine one person could read this book and not find a lot of humour in it and then someone like myself could read it and find it utterly hilarious but it is just so sharp. And I've mentioned this a few times already as well but what I really liked is how historically rich this book is. It should be taught in schools. The detail it goes into through the history of Europe through such an interesting lens is just brilliant. The level of research that went into this book is also to be commended. The way that it can blend the really small idiosyncratic details with these huge political paradigm shifts all at once is just great. This book also just feels so relevant to contemporary society. Across the past five years, maybe even longer, I've just noticed this absolute obsession with the mainstream in the films, TV and music that we are consuming that really lends itself or pushes on the idea of our feelings of nostalgia. And this book does a really good job at also highlighting how that isn't really that healthy. Having lived through Brexit 
and experienced many conversations with people of the older generation about the good old days and reverting back to the good old days. Yeah, I mean, very, very fitting with what this book is exploring. Second side note, I loved how in this book, England was not allowed to take part in the nostalgia referendum due to the fact that they were no longer a part of the European Union. <laughs> And finally, I absolutely loved how philosophically jam-packed this book was. When I eventually decided to slow down with it, I was able to just give myself so much time to question and think about everything it was throwing at me. It begs to be reread or read slowly. What didn't I like? Now, this could be because I decided to read this book very, very quickly, or it could just be a failing of the book. But the middle section got a little bit sluggish. The writing style and pace sort of bogged down on me a little bit. I think it also comes down to the fact that some of those middle sections I just wasn't as intrigued by as a reader. Someone else might be absolutely invested in those ideas, but yeah, that middle section just didn't grab me as much. But I think with a book of this style and how much information it's throwing at you, there are going to be some sections that don't grab you as much as others do. And this book is around 300 pages long, and I would say there was only three chapters in total in the entirety that didn't grab me as much as the others. Now this isn't exactly a dislike, but I don't think that this book is for everyone. As mentioned, it's got minimal plot and character development. It is just a book of ideas, which might not be to everybody's taste. It also didn't affect me on an emotional level at all. I found it fascinating and intriguing and brilliant, but yeah, emotionally, there's nothing in there that's really affecting me in that way. There were a few things that started to get there, but nothing that impacted me in a big way. Future Andy here. I've just realised whilst editing that I said this book didn't affect me on an emotional level in any way, which is obviously a lie because I found it hilarious, which is of course a big emotional reaction. But other than that humour, it didn't affect me in an emotional way at all. And when it comes down to winning the International Booker Prize, I feel like that might be one thing against it. But this book is so totally worthy of being on this shortlist. It absolutely 100% deserves its place on this shortlist. It's the first book I've read from the shortlist, but I would genuinely be so happy if this won. I'm gonna give this book four to 4.5 stars out of five. Fascinating and hilarious. So have you read this book? What did you think about it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Please let me know in the comments below. And as always, I hope you're well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all on the next one.